tonight from TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville, Florida. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Cleveland Browns. Looks like it's going to be a pretty soggy night here at TIAA Bank Field. Rain showers, maybe an occasional clap of thunder supposed to continue throughout here in Jacksonville. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with the Cleveland Browns. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Now Donovan Peoples-Jones. And they'll get him down inside the 30th to 27. The Oklahoma product, Baker Mayfield, trotting out there now with the rest of this Browns offense. Is it okay if I give him a few props right here? Do you mind? I think he's earned it. Go ahead. Okay, how about a guy who was a two-time walk-on who later became a two-time Big 12 Player of the Year, has the most touchdown passes in Big 12 history with 129, a Heisman Trophy into his credit, and took his team to the college football playoff semifinal twice while at Oklahoma. First carry now for Nick Chubb. And yeah, they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That good for 22 and a first down. Opening quarter, his opening carry of the game. And I think they'll give it to him a few more times, as they should. You're exactly right about that. With that type of a run, you want to repeat it many times until they show signs of stopping it. I think he did his visualization exercise before this one, and they're paying off. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Working out of the gun, Mayfield, and finding the tight end, Hooper. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Brings up second. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. First carry now for Kareem Hunt. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Just shy of the 20. 22 yards there, a first down. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Joe Tackle Schubert. made by the longtime member of these Browns, Joe Schobert. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Out of the gun, they run it with Hunt. 
Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for first. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. I think that's a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Cody, now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal. This a 33-yard attempt. The kick by Parkey is good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. Browns 3, Jaguars nothing. Weather like this, always treacherous for kickers. A good sign early, though, is he's able to put that one through. And you remember him right before the kick stomping around his area to make sure that things were going to hold for his plant foot, and it did. now following the main field goal to kick this one off. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And a glance at the tall signal caller standing 6-6. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team to wins. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Got a man, that's Colin Johnson. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Now a dump off here complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. No gain. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Back to throw here. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 28. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, 
you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Over the middle, Cooper with it. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. MJ Stewart in on the tackle. That's the end of the first quarter. 3 0 after one on EA Sports. got a yard here second and nine from the shotgun he'll look to throw and this is caught it's Cooper and the Jags are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves him all the way down to the one that gain of 15 gets him on the doorstep first and goal seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter you can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. They'll try and run. This is Robinson. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and goal. This defense is really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. On that sideline, they're saying that was more like it. The first down run went backwards, that time into the end zone. And I liked a little bit of courage and play calling, too, because after an unsuccessful run, especially one where you lose yardage, you oftentimes go right to throw in the football. They came right back with a running play, and it paid off handsomely. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. this one away that'll be taken about a yard deep and ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped at the 23 take over first and 10 at their own second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense and last time able to get three it's not what they wanted they wanted six but they got at least something they mustered something out of the drive They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Mayfield's going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 23. To begin the drive, here's a handoff to Hunt. 
And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Oh, you Kareem Hunt. We know you've got the power. We know you've got the speed. Now how about that? Show us a little bit of that wiggle in there. How about that one, partner? Can you imagine trying to tackle that? Yeah, I'll stay up here with you. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They run with Hunt. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Running with Hunt here out of the shotgun. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. They'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. And it's third down. Chubb, and he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. He would give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Mayfield gives this one to Hunt. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches. Two-minute drill. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 24-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Well, we can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good pickup. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go-around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Let's go, defense, let's 
Mayfield this time gets it off to Chubb. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. The ball resting on the 20. Here's second and six. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Now a first and 10 at the 11. And again, it's Mayfield. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it up field, and that brings up second down. And not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and 10. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Mayfield finding Odell Beckham with a touchdown pass. And once again, the Browns are back in front. That could be an important swing right there. A touchdown of the final minute of the half to take the lead. And I like the point you just made there. Could be an important swing because now that they have the lead, if they can carry that into the locker room at the half, they'll feel really good about what they accomplished in the first two quarters. Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that drive 12 plays in length, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Cody Parkey. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Taken from about the 12. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. The Jaguars take over first and 10 at their own 33-yard line. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. You're down three, under a minute to go. How aggressive are you going to be in this spot? Not as aggressive as I probably would want to be. Only down three. I mean, it might as well be even going into the half. That's not a deficit that makes me want to push it and potentially make a mistake in this situation and cost myself even more points. But boy, getting in a field goal range and tying it, that's tempting. Awfully enticing. You almost talked me into it. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Caught on the right side by Treadwell. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. Back 
back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Johnson, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. That one complete, he finds Shark. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The 25 yard line is what they need here. This is third down. to throw again. He gets it left side to Johnson. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Fourth down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on fourth down, Jags kicker Josh Lambeau comes on. From the left hash, this from 46. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will tie things up as we head toward halftime. That ties the game at 10. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. Jones returning. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Jones on the return. The Browns take over first and 10 at their own 27 yard line. And a white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. set to continue as we are underway in the second half. That'll be taken about a yard deep. 
And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. 25-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. They'll start the third quarter here on the ground. And he'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. His throw incomplete. He was looking for James O'Shaughnessy as tight end. And it's third and short. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Obviously an important run to avoid the three and out on your own side of the field. Shows a lot of faith in that offensive unit, doesn't it? That you want to run the ball in that situation. Pick up the first down. Also helps out your defensive guys a little bit, too. Allows them to get at least one more series of downs in order to get some rest. down he'll drop to throw it over the middle he's got Treadwell and he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35 a well executed 22 yard game well, that was a fun one to watch right there a nice in breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field and he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup First and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 34. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Johnson. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. That's a nice throw out there to the flapper. They defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Ben, in all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Yeah, it looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. The Browns D locked in on third down, brings up fourth. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. The kick by Lambeau is good. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. Jaguars 13, Browns 10. Well, they don't get a touchdown here in the opening drive of the third quarter, but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No, absolutely. You keep the pressure on, right? You go downfield, get some points up on the board, and hope that you motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. Now, 
the main field goal back out. Lambeau to kick this one off. Peoples Jones returning. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Browns take over first and 10. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. A first down throw for Mayfield. He's got Hooper on the short connection. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. That one, a first down pickup of eight. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They run it again with Chubb. And some room to maneuver. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. 23 yards the pick up there. They've kept him in check until that run. That's the first time he's really gotten loose in this game. And they have to keep that in mind. Don't dwell on the fact that he finally had a big run. You kind of are counting on that as the game went on. Get back to what you were doing before. Start limiting him again. and 10 Mayfield and finding the tight end Hooper this will be stopped about Mayfield two yards shy of the marker eight yard gain second and two eight yards on now that's staying ahead of the chains really good two. pickup on first At down the hitting the tight end there line. now it brings up a second and manageable just found a hole in that zone facing a second and two after that last catch good for eight yards Mayfield leaves it for Hunt on the draw. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Defense simply not fooled by the draw there. Well, they were thinking run to begin with, and what they tell their defensive linemen is, play the run on your way to the quarterback. If someone shows, they'll get him, and that's exactly what they did. Mayfield on third and two, and he's got his man. That's Landry. Yeah, the Browns are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? Ball gets tipped in the air because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. Now they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Mayfield now. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. From 10 yards out, and the Browns have retaken the lead. 
getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. First and 10 at their own 30-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Completes it right side to Cooper. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They tackle them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Instead of the first, they'll have to go backwards for another second down try. So if there is a silver lining, though, it stays second down. And they still have an opportunity to pick up a first down before they have to start their downs over again. They'll look to throw here on first down. Looking deep in the direction of Cooper. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Pharaoh Cooper, the one he was looking for. And now it's second down. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit him over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. They'll look to throw now on first down. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Grant Delpit able to take him down. It's a loss of three. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. Following the sack, they'll try to change their fortune here on second and 13. Oh. 
toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. LaVisca Chenault, the intended target, and it's third down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. The Jaguars on third down, just one for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And that's caught by Azigbo. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Logan Cook now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. First and 10 at their own 27. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open but you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. They'll try and wind down some clock with Chubb. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. A loss of five yards. And it's and on that one, the protection just broke down. Third. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. From the gun, Mayfield. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Sidney Jones. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Touchdown. This game, it's been defensively oriented on both sides, so I guess it stands to reason that the play of the game comes on defense. So it's my kind of game. You know that. That's anytime right. we have that's a defensive right. battle, but that, as you said, it stands to reason that's the way the game tilted. Someone had to make a big play, and the way the defenses were dominating, that's exactly what we got. Extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now. 
as this one's in the air. Peoples Jones returning. And up to about the 26 yard line, just across the 25. Jones on the return. The Browns take over first and 10. Now Mayfield and the Browns. Down 20 to 17. 222 on the clock. Deuces wild. Plenty of time here. They've got three timeouts and the two minute warning as they've got it first and 10. to it after the pick six Mayfield to the right side and he's got Landry complete Mayfield not much there only a yard I always laugh when people say what's the toughest route to defend I'm like any of them especially if it's a good receiver that makes things very difficult but when you're running a drag route something short shallow going through defenders using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open that makes things tougher guys trying to get to the football now the second down throw on target. Mayfield's four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. It's a gain of four, and it's third down. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. They'll go screen here to Hunt. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And he finally goes down at the 23-yard line. Kareem Hunt. A huge play there on the screen pass. 46 yards. down, Cleveland. First down now, but that clock rolling. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Donovan Peoples-Jones there to make the grab. And the Browns have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation. But to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late. But now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. Now parking for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So that drive spanned five plays. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Cody Parkey. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. This is taken just shy of the 10. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. Jaguars take over first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. So now all eyes shift to the Jags, trailing by four. Exactly one minute remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down.
Back to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. And he was trying to get it to Divine Zigbo there, but it's going to be second down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. He'll look to throw. And incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and 10. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Defense. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. The number one pick, Miles Garrett, coming in to drop him. Now how about that? Rattled by a big play on the previous snap, they bounce back, and that's exactly what they needed defensively, getting a big play of their own. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. He's back to throw. And yeah, this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. Now they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Johnson. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. Tonight, well, Charles, they were close in the end, but they couldn't get that last play, that last little miracle play done. They were within striking distance, but couldn't find a way to score. They definitely had hope. They definitely had opportunity. Just unable to cash in at the end. Not an easy play by any stretch, but they definitely had a chance. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Jacksonville, good night, everybody.